Hi, this is Christina Warren from Mashable.com, and this is our iOS 4 walkthrough. Okay, so first things first, when you look at the home screen, the first thing you'll notice <clears throat> is that the wallpaper is different. Now, if you have an iPad, you're familiar with, with this look, and if you have any other smartphone that's been purchased in, oh, I don't know, the last <laughs> eight or nine years, um, you're also familiar with the, the idea of customizing wallpaper. Apple's finally out of this, yay, um, as well as a translucent menu bar and a 3D dock. So the first things, let's just take a look at how the wallpaper is set. Um, you click on the settings uh, bar and you go to general, and then you go to, um, oh, I missed it, it's actually right in wallpaper. And um, you, as you can see, you can have the lock screen set, um, or you can have the home screen you can ma either make them different or the same um so i could take this for for wallpaper um and select say oh i like this wallpaper set it um and i can say set lock screen set home screen set both i like having my friends saying as uh siegfried from siegfried and roy as my lock screen and the wallpaper that i've chosen actually works pretty well for video purposes so that's what we're going to stick with okay so that's one of the features is that you can customized wallpaper. Um, the other big interface feature, the big thing that you're going to notice when you look at the phone is folders. Folders are really, really cool. And it's an idea that I, I think that Apple probably should have implemented beforehand, but I'm glad that they've implemented them now. Um, one of the biggest problems with the iPhone is that there are so many apps that it's hard to organize your applications and it's hard to keep them in a way that's both accessible and still have every app you might want to access on your phone um, without having to go through pages and pages of apps. And if you're like me and you review apps um, and you have hundreds of them, then it makes it that much harder. So folders kind of go a long way at solving this problem. So for instance, I've got a folder that's called Swiss Army Knife. And this is actually just kind of a collection of apps that are really good for a bunch of different things. You know, deliveries, consume, one password, Dropbox, Goodreader, etc. Uh, if I wanted to add an app to that folder, all I would do is I would hold down on the icons until they get jiggly, and then I would simply drag the icon until it goes into the folder. So for instance, this case, now Ember is in my Swiss Army apps file. Um, and then if I wanted to edit this, a, I could edit the, the text to say anything that I want the text to say. Um, and if I wanted to remove Ember and put it back, um, then that's that's all I would have to do is just, just move it around. So um, if you want to create a new folder uh, or stack, as I kind of like to refer to them because they, they look so much like stacks from my point of view, and then all you really need to do is drag two icons on top of one another. So again, hold down on the button and then drag two icons on top of one another. It'll automatically create an, um, a, a label for you based on the, the, the genre of app that you're, you've got, but you can change that. So productivity actually works for this. Um, and then if you wanna get rid of the stack, you can just remove um, both items that, that, are, that are in the folder. So um, folders are really cool. I think that it's, it's gonna be a great way to organize applications. And in our iTunes 9.2 walkthrough, we actually go through how you can manage that within iTunes itself. So folders, uh, wallpaper, good stuff. The next big feature, and probably honestly the biggest feature of uh, iOS 4, at least for end users, is of course the addition of multitasking. So if you've got an iPhone 3GS or you get an upcoming uh, iPhone 4, then um, you're going to be able to do run multiple applications at one time. Now. Apple's let you do this with certain applications in the past. For instance, your mail app could check persistently and you know, could give you could check for updates even if you were in another application and iTunes would would let you play music from your iPod um, while you were browsing the web or playing a game. But it's been limited to different applications. And Apple's whole re rationale for, for limiting multitasking, I mean, it, it does make sense if you've ever used a BlackBerry or an Android phone. It really, really, really can limit your battery life. And it can also cause your phone um, memory to get completely eaten up by open applications and you have to restart and it becomes messy. So Apple's um, solution to this actually is pretty clever and, and is actually pretty nice. Um, they do two things. First, um, they've enabled persistent app states uh, across the board, meaning that when you open an application, provided the developer has enabled this, 
when you switch to another application, when you return to the first app, it picks up exactly where you left off. So you don't feel like you're having to open it all the time and you don't feel like it's going to take forever and you've gotta to, got to cycle back through. The second thing is that certain applications are able to perform tasks in the background. So as, as we showed off in our Pandora uh, uh, walkthrough and, and preview, um, you can listen to Pandora while you are um, browsing the web or doing anything else, and, and that's all built in. So, excuse me for one second. Okay, so um, that's actually a pretty nice solution, both that the persistent app switching, it makes it easy to switch between applications and it'll get you right back into that state. And then for certain apps like music applications or social networking applications or mapping apps, you can still have those tasks that are working in the background without it taking over your entire system um, and, and eating away your memory and draining your battery. So let's take a look at how you wanna switch to another application. Okay, so I'm in Safari and I'm, I'm reading something and I think it's awesome. I'm looking at this ABC local news story and then I say, you know what, I would really like to go to Twitter. So I double click on the home button. Actually, I did that too fast. Okay, so back in Safari. Double click on the home button and at the bottom bar, you see all my recently opened applications. And I can go here and I can select what app I want to use. And lo and behold, here's Twitter. So I load up Twitter and you see that nice little transition. So Twitter's going to load exactly where I was the last time it was up. And I can just scroll through my alerts. I can go to my direct messages. I can do all kinds of stuff. So it makes it really, really nice. Um, if I want to go back to Safari, I just do that and it takes me right back to my page. What's also nice is if you do a swipe to the right, Depending on what music app you have playing, you can either play music from your iPod um, or if uh, you have Pandora or I guess you know some other music applications will be able to take advantage of this, you can skip to the next track, you can play and pause your music and this button right here will actually lock the um, screen. So when I turn this around, notice it hasn't, it hasn't changed its orientation. That's an orientation lock. And people who like to read in bed and, and get frustrated by having to do the old, you know, turn the, you know, iPhone with the home button facing up and then turn to the right, you know, 90 degrees um, to try to prevent it from going back uh, and, and not letting you read in bed, we'll, we'll be thankful for uh, this lock mechanism. So um, that's basically how app switching works. You know, you just, you double click on the home button and you can scroll through your open applications. Now, in another video, we showed off how Pandora works and how it does backgrounding, but let's look at another application and kind of, you know, give you an idea of what it does. Now, this is Evernote, which is a note-taking application, and I really like Evernote, and it actually supports, as you saw real quickly, there was a, a, a green button at the top that said synchronizing, and if I wanted to create a new note, I'm gonna do something from a camera roll, I'm gonna grab this Toy Story thing, and I'm also gonna grab this, and it's saving the changes across and it's syncing things across the server. Um, but if, say, if I was uploading a ton of stuff and I didn't have time to wait for Evernote to finish, I could just go to another application and Evernote's still gonna keep uploading in the background. It's, it's not going to quit on me. Um, it's gonna continue working, which is exactly what it should do. So Dropbox is gonna support that as well. And that makes it really, really nice. And I think that's the sort of example of where multitasking is useful. Uh, you know, on devices like this, you know, oftentimes we, we talk about wanting to have a million apps open, but really, when you have a single screen, it's not like you necessarily want a million different notifications. But now apps can actually provide their own internal notifications and system notifications, in addition to push notifications. So if a call is coming in from Skype while you're doing something else, you can get it. Or if, you know, the phone is in sleep mode, um, you can be alerted when you get a Skype call or something else. So um, I think that, that Apple uh, has a really good system in place for keeping battery life decent while also um, still offering consumers a lot of functionality. Let's go ahead and we have a gallery up, but let's take a look at what iBooks looks like. Now, if you've used the iPad, uh, you're familiar with the iBooks application. If you haven't, uh, they've done a really, really nice job of kind of bringing that uh, iPad app down to the smaller size. So the store is very nice and it's very easy to, to navigate just kind of like any of the other um, 
you know, the, the app store, the iTunes store. You can kind of scroll through things. You can find books to read. You can look up your past purchases and see, hey, you know, I want to re-download these. Like these are some of my free Gutenberg books that I haven't downloaded. And if you want to go to your library, you need to just go to your library and like, for instance, I've got my, my uh, Winnie the Pooh and I've got some trash, uh, not trash, a business book. And then uh, a book about a washed up uh, former child actress because I really love to read trash novels. Love it. So for instance, you know, this book I want to go ahead and read about Jodie Sweetin's Fall from Grace. Um, and you see, you know, how the, the text is really well formatted. It's a really attractive layout. I have to say, I think that, you know, it's really readable. Um, the transitions are really nice. You can basically go straight back to the library. I really like the feature, for instance, I can go straight to the table of contents and that's really well formatted. I can go to my bookmarks that I might have had on any other device. Um, and I don't, uh, here will actually, it shows, you know, adding a bookmark, adding highlights. Um, I can resume reading. You can do a full text search throughout the book, which is really, really nice. And you could also highlight phrases. You can change the brightness. You can change the font and put a sepia background on if that makes it easier for you to read. So um, I think they've done a really nice job with the iBooks app. Uh, this is um, what it looks like if you're just reading it in landscape mode. Um, they don't have the two-page approach like they do on the iPad. Uh, but I think that when you're looking at it in portrait mode, they've done a really, really nice job of uh, presenting text. And just to kind of give you, you know, you can see what text looks like here. Just to kind of give you um, a comparison, I'm going to go to my Kindle app where I have tons and tons of books and kind of show you the difference. Um, and I think that the Kindle app for iPhone is actually really great, honestly. Um, however, uh, it's not quite, the text is it's just not quite as tight. I mean, it still looks great, but it's just not quite as, uh, as beautiful as it is on the iPhone. So the iBooks app, I think they've done a really nice job with. Let's look at some other things. Now, mail has received a big overhaul, and I think that it was, it was greatly needed. Now, for instance, I can go and I've got all my inboxes. I can view one inbox, and I've got my individual inboxes. Additionally, you can see what type of service I have these accounts. The at sign means it was set up on my computer, the mobile, my mobile me account, my Mashable account, which is a Gmail account. Now, one thing that's really cool in addition to having the unified inbox and also having threaded messages, uh, which I'm not going to show because my inbox is actually live right now, um, and I, I can't uh, predict exactly what would be um, displayed, is that you can now sync your calendars across your IMAP devices. So with Gmail, for instance, you've been able to sync notes, but you haven't been able to sync calendars unless you added it and then synced it through iTunes. Now you can actually do it over the air. And I think that's really, really nice. Um, that's one less step, you know, if, that way if you're on a computer that doesn't have um, iTunes hooked up or you don't have your phone with you and, and you want to have over the air syncing, all of that's done now. And uh, that's the way it should be. And I think that's really nice. Additionally, when you view the calendar now, you can choose what calendar you want to see or what calendar you don't want to see. And this shows, you also have to separate birthday calendars. So I like that, for instance, on my phone, these are those calendars, my different um, attached email accounts, and then Mobile Me, all the different um, calendars I have synced with Mobile Me. If you do use Mobile Me, you probably will have a little bit of overlap in some of your calendars, I'll be honest with you. But uh, now they're kind of bringing that functionality to people who don't even have a Mobile Me, Me subscription, which is really nice. Other uh, major features, you know, um, the, the system, it's a little bit more fluid. There are some uh, additional changes with YouTube. You can now watch videos in portrait mode if you want to. Most of the, the smaller built-in apps are the same. Um, more and more applications are going to start supporting iOS 4 backgrounding and, and adding you know, different multitasking supports and, and different little things like that, so that's going to be nice. Uh, the camera now lets you uh, tap to focus when you're taking video, and you have a 5 type zoom, which is really nice. There are a few alterations with the, the messaging system. You can now set it up so that it will show you how many characters you have. One thing I do actually quite like is system-wide spell check. So I'm going to try to spell something incorrect like uh, Scholastic. And now you see how it's read and underlined. I tap it and... 
I can, um, ah. Almost had a perfect demo. All right, so I tap this and it will show me, um, I can choose Scholastic or I can use, choose Scholastics, which is nice. And that's system wide. So unless the apps just for some reason aren't tapping into that, uh, third party apps that use text input should now accept um, both um, suggestions as you type and um, built in spell check, which is really, really nice. And that's another feature from the iPad and it's it's definitely important. Um, Bluetooth keyboard support is now supported um, and it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. And obviously I think that some of the, the location-based stuff is going to be really fun to watch as well. And then folders of course mean that you can make it, it's much, much easier for you to organize your application. So you don't, that's why I have all these blank spaces with my apps. It would be really, really nice if there was a way for, for, app, for Apple to let you just sort and, and fill in all these blank spaces. Alas, they haven't, but, but maybe in the future. So this is just kind of a little overview, a little preview of iOS 4. We will be continuing to kind of cover various apps and, and what they do and how they take advantage of the new features. And obviously we will be um, offering some hands-on um, comparisons between the iPhone 3GS and the iPhone 4, which comes out this Thursday. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments or you want to leave your own examples of some great iOS 4 apps, please do so in the comments. Thanks.